Hey guys, my name's TSW and welcome to my video on Mongu Shan Palace, one of the uh, instances in Mr. Pandaria. Now in order to queue for this instance you must first be level 87 and I believe that is the level to actually enter the instance itself. So you can't be lower level to enter the instance, which I think is a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, you can get yourself some pretty cool loot, however, on the beta... Uh, you cannot actually get any loot drops from the bosses. But anyway, uh, let's hit things up. We've got three bosses. We have uh, Trial of the King. We have Gekin and his minions. And we also have Ex Exin, the Weapon Master. All three uh, pretty diverse bosses. Got some really interesting abilities. And um, yeah, definitely my favourite of the new instances brought to us in Miss of Pandaria. Uh, there are, I think, four raids as well, but the raids aren't out yet on the beta, so I can't comment about those yet. But for now, let's stick with the five mans. Again, this is um, Mogu Shan Palace, um, a really, really fun instance. And again, this is normal mode, so um, it's pretty easy uh, for those of you uh, like me who are used to the, the heroics and for raids. Um, but yeah, it's fun, no doubt, and I'm really looking forward to the heroic mode even more so for this instance because the abilities are very fun so yeah let's get into it we have ourselves some trash here uh, the trash is pretty easy um, we have ourselves uh, the flame seekers which are the most notable of all of the trash um, because you can things can get out of hand pretty quickly um, if you do ignore um, you know what what they're doing, but I'll explain more about that um, when I've got a little bit more time. But for now, we are at the first boss, Trial of the King. You uh, get this first boss quite quickly, but don't think you're going to get the loot straight away because um, there's a bit of a ninja involved, and I don't mean someone in our group. I mean an NPC ninja. But I'll talk more about that later on. So for now, we have the first of three mini bosses as part of this encounter. And this guy is none other than Heian the Unstoppable. Um, he has a uh, few abilities. Um, he has three abilities. Uh, Conflagrate, Meteor and uh, Traumatic Blow. Uh, the Conflagrate is a um, ability that lights a random player on fire in a huge gout of flame. This does 20,000 fire damage every second and disorientates the victim when the Conflagrate ends it jumps to another creature so this could be your pet could be yourself etc etc he also does a meteor which he just did then he hurls a fiery boulder at a random player when it lands it inflicts 150,000 fire damage in a 10 yard radius you saw the red circle of molten aoe on the floor um, that 150,000 fire damage is distributed between all players in its 10 yard radius so you can be, um, you know, cautious and everyone hug up and always soak that damage between uh, all of your uh, ranged. Or maybe if you can stand on melee, you can take it in melee as well. Um, or you could stand out and, uh, you know, just try and avoid it when it comes towards you. He also has a traumatic blow, which is 185% weapon damage as physical damage at its current target. And there's also a debuff like Mortal Strike, reducing HP by 50% for 5 seconds. Uh, this mini boss is called um, Minning the Cunning. He favours uh, wind and lightning abilities. He's got himself um, Whirling um, Devish, Dervish, which um, which he summons and uh, moves to a random player around the arena, inflicting forty five thousand nature damage and knocking them back. What he's doing now is his lightning bolt, which does 55,500 nature damage to his main target. This can be interrupted, but not charged and spell reflected. He also has his magnetic field, which he's doing now, which will which he'll spin around, causing a magnetic field that pulls nearby creatures into his vortex. What's in the vortex, you will suffer 45,000 nature damage every second. And again, this is a uh, mining, minning the cunning. Um, kind of easy. Uh, again, it's normal mode, so I'm going to be saying throughout this is easy. As you can see, we are four manning this. We are in the queue for a third DPS, but I thought that um, doing some sort of you know walkthrough guide of this instance, four manning it would be pretty cool um, because you are able to see all of the mechanics of all the bosses and all of the trash. 
Um, and this is the last guy. Uh, this is QA the Brute. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but that's what I'm sticking with. He favours fist weapons and a um, and a companion uh, called Mushaba. Uh, Mushabi Mushaba um, is a non-aggro pet which has a ability called Ravage, which tackles a random player to the ground, uh, then ravages them. The Ravage does 31,500 physical damage to that player every second for 10 seconds, and after the 10-second duration, he will then ravage somebody else. Um, so he has no aggro, so be mindful of um, when it's on the healer, because they're stunned and can't heal themselves. Um, so that's when, as a tank, you want to be doing things like a rallying cry and intervening with safeguard talent, preferably. Um, uh, this boss also himself, uh, QA the Brute, has a shockwave ability, which is like a really quick cast, like a second cast or even less than that, um, which is a front cone AoE, as you'd imagine, with most shockwaves, which launches the player into the air, or players, if there are more than one person in front of him in that radius. Um, and the only damage they take, I believe, is from the fall damage. You don't take initial damage from the shockwave. However, this is one of our first kills, or one of my first kills. So um, I do take the shockwave quite a few times. But um, still, so then I'm moving on. I still take it because it's very, uh, very quick cast. But since then, um, I now stand almost inside the boss. So that now I, I can just like do a step forward, or one step to the left, or one step to the right, and I avoid it because, as you can see here. I'm moving quickly, but it's not quickly enough. Um, and also, whilst you're targeting his pet, Mushaba, um, Mushaba, again, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of hectic when you have the pet you're trying to nuke down first. Oh, one thing I must say is that if you do kill QA the Brute before his pet, the pet will, um, you know, stop attacking. He will um, yield, if you like. Um, so this is the ninja I was talking to you about. Uh, Glyn Rock Scout. I'm here opening the chest, hoping for some fat loot, and he's there robbing it all. So, I don't know what's going to happen about that. You'll have to uh, wait until you see the rest of the video to see if we get our fat loot. Although, I must mention that it, uh, at the current state of the beta, you don't get any uh, instance loot from this guy. So, yeah. But in live, um, I'm sure a lot of people will be annoyed uh, <laughs> not getting their loot straight away. But this, the first boss, the Trial of the King encounter... Um, whatever you call it, gauntlet, arena, battle. Um, it is quite early on in the instance, so I think it's quite cool the way that you don't get the loot straight away um, because you could just like farm the first boss over and over and over again. Um, also, the three uh, mini-bosses of that um, arena boss, whatever you want to call it, they are, uh, they do, um, they're not always in that order is what I'm trying to say. You would sometimes get one, then the other, and the other, it's a different order. Okay, so this trash, uh, it's kind of fun. Um, excuse me. We have uh, Glinrock. Excuse me. We have Glinrock. Not, not, not Glinrock, excuse me. You can read it there. Glinrock Ironhides. Um, they've got a really uh, unique uh, aura, which when uh, they're close to each other, these two mobs, they reduce damage taken by 50%. So um, naturally, you'd think to yourself, okay, well, we can CC one of them. But generally speaking, when you CC something... Um, you don't do damage to it, you know, like a sheep or a hex, etc. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really see the need for CCing one of them, but just, just be mindful that they do take less damage when they are together. Because when they're together, you can shockwave, you can cleave, as can the rest of the other classes in your group. So just be mindful that they do take less damage when they're together, but at the same time, if you feel it necessary, you can obviously have the option to split them up to nuke one of them down quicker. Um, this may be something you may uh, want to go for in heroic mode if the mobs hit ridiculously hard. Which, again, Blizzard, please make the bosses hit ridiculously hard and the mobs. Because I would like the like, the whole scenario thing and the heroics to be brick hard in, in a word, in a phrase, whatever. Okay, so these guys are, what are these? Glinrock uh, Sulkings, I think they're called. Uh, Sulkers, Skulkers. Uh, they have an ability called Shank, which stuns you for five seconds. Now, again, be mindful of what happens with the trash, because the trash is almost identical to the next boss encounter, which I really like. Uh, thank you, Blizzard, for doing stuff like this. You know, you get you know you get like you get like quests and instances which relate to raid content and all that. You know, if you uh, took the time to learn about the quests, 
you have a uh, extra hand in the uh, instances when you uh, you know you, you take note of the trash you have um, you know a little bit more information for the bosses but basically these guys stun their main target i.e. the tank with a shank ability and they do the shank ability very very early on so be mindful of your threat so whenever i see them start to cast shank i hit them with a shockwave when shockwave is on cooldown and i still don't feel like i have a i have as much aggro as i should hit them with an intimidating shank just something to stop that um that initial shank so you can build up more threat because the worst thing you want is for um those mobs to be attacking someone else and it's not a nice feeling as a tank as i'm sure every tank knows when the mobs attacking someone else but i just again if you are struggling with the shank us warrior tanks have a phenomenal new ability called uh, mocking banner which is insane if you don't know what it is it i'll talk to you about it in a sec i'm just going to talk about this trash really quickly um these guys um i can't remember what they're called do i have it written down uh, no, uh, they do a hex of legarthy, leth lethargy, lethargy. I can't read my writing, but basically what it does is reduce the cast speed of the target by twenty five percent. But yeah, um, mana mocking banner basically pull. You know how a uh, challenging shout works. You do challenging shout, and that's a AOE taunt. What a mocking banner does is goes AOE taunt, AOE taunt. AOE taunt like every second if not more frequently than a second but I think it's a second every second it does an AOE taunt to you you can put the banner I think like 30 yards away from you out of line of sight even and it'll taunt the target to you which is insane so if you were stunned by the shank and you had a mocking banner down guess what the mobs will still be attacking you it's great I love that banner um, I think most warriors are really fond of their uh, new banners that they get. Again, as a, a warrior, you get all three banners, and they have independent cooldowns, which is pretty cool. Uh, a three-minute cooldown, I think, on on each of them separately. Okay, so we're making our way up to the, or making our way down, should I say, to the uh, the second boss, who is called Gekken. He's a pretty cool boss, and again, I this will be, I don't know, this or the last boss will most likely be my favourite boss on heroic mode. Um, I think this one might be the hardest as well, just because this boss drops an insane trinket. On normal mode, drops a trinket with 1,100 stamina. Now that's insane. That's almost, almost double the stamina of any other trinket in the game, in uh, uh, Cataclysm at least anyway. Um, so these mobs are kind of bugged. Well, it's not so much the mobs, it's more of the environment. At the top of the stairs, there's kind of like a line of sight point where you can't actually run through you have to jump in order to get past it. Also, uh, remember the ninja mob, which stole our loot from the first uh, encounter, first arena gauntlet thing? Um, he is here. So presumably when you kill him, uh, you'll be able to get your loot now. If you've been playing any Diablo 3, there is a mob very similar to this, uh, which basically has a big rucksack, not really a rucksack, a big sack of jewels and gems and loot over their shoulder and they run away and as you kill him he drops lots of cool stuff and the mob looks almost identical to him so there's kind of like a bit of a d3 mr pandaria cross reference here but anyway it's really cool i think it's really nice the way that a blizzard made a uh, the first encounter so early on in the instance and yet you know you, you complete the encounter but you don't get the loot straight away which i think is really really a nice trade-off i think blizzard did well to sort that out uh, you'll notice that we're on this trash for quite a long time. That's because the Glint Rock Greenhorns are um, spawning continuously. Um, what we're doing is we're killing the Oracles. The Oracles do heal, by the way. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Because, like I say, the trash is very similar to this next boss. Um, but once you kill the Oracles, they do heal themselves. Just interrupt it. They do also do some damage. Um, you know, just heal yourself up and start the next encounter. But for now, there's a line of sight point, and you can see they're evading when we go down the stairs. So you once you're down the stairs, these mobs, at least on the beta, will not interact or interfere with uh, the following boss. So you can just ignore them. You don't even have to kill the trash. Just run through, run down the stairs. Uh, the mobs all start evading, and uh, you can continue with the rest of the uh, rest of the instance. Right. So let's have a quick swig of water. Right, so here we are in Gekken. A uh, really fun fight. You see Gekken in the middle, you see, uh, and he also has, has three friends. Um, only, yeah, he has three friends. 
Um, one of them will be traded out, I think, because there are four um, mobs listed in the uh, the dungeon finder. Actually, no, there are four mobs. Yeah, sorry, my bad. For some reason, I only saw three of them before. Anyway, um, Gekken, he has um, a buff which he will put on one of his um, allies called uh, Reckless Inspiration. What this does is it inspires one of his subordinates, increasing their haste by 25%. And rendering them immune to long duration CCs. But as a trade off they also receive 25% more damage taken. And this effect can stack. So um, just be mindful of this. If uh, one of the mobs seems to be casting ridiculously fast. They will be taking additional damage. And if this you know obviously because the effect stacks. You need to be mindful of it. He also has Inspiring Cry. Which will probably be the least seen ability. Um, unless you decide to do it. Do the tactic this way but i'll explain what it does first um, upon death gekin utters a final rallying cry granting reckless inspiration to all remaining members of his entourage meaning that like reckless inspiration which was talked about increasing their haste and damage taken and making them immune to cc that'll happen when you kill gekin so you either have to decide we're going to kill gekin first um or we can kill the ads one by one. And I think for the most part we decide to kill the ads one by one. But bear in mind that you do have the option to kill Gekin first. But, you know, to be mindful of the uh, reckless, excuse me, inspiration. So Gekin's entourage, there are four trained Sarok mobs. We have uh, the Glintrock Ironhide, Glintrock uh, Sulka, Glintrock Oracle and Glintrock Hexa. Almost identical to the trash that we have seen thus far. The uh, Glintrock Ironhide, as mentioned before, they, he has a aura which reduces damage taken by 50% to all allies within 5 yards. We have the Glintrock Sulker, which has a shank ability which does 150% weapon damage and stuns his main target for 5 seconds. Glintrock Oracle, who has two abilities, one being um, Cleansing Flame. Healing all allies within 60 yards for 150,000 health. And also Firebolt um, at the current target will do damage equal to its own melee swing as fire damage. Uh, we also have the Glintrock Hexer, which has Hex of Lethargy, lethargy uh, which hexes the target inflicting 30,000 shadow damage plus reducing their spell cast time by 20% for 20 seconds. This effect does stack. And also, the Hexer has Dark Bolt, uh, which will uh, inflict shadow damage equal to a melee swing at his current target. So as you can see, we killed all the mobs pretty simply. Again, it's normal mode, so don't expect silly amounts of damage or to be um, given too much of a challenge. But just be mindful that there are a lot of mobs. They are CC-able, regarding they don't have reckless inspiration on them. If you are going to be CCing them, don't kill Gekin first, because like I say, he'll use Inspiring Cry uh, when he dies, granting reckless inspiration to all of his mobs, rendering them immune to CC. Um, what I'd go for is possibly focusing down uh, Glintrock Oracle first, because you can easily interrupt the 150,000 HP heals, and CCing the Glintrock Ironhide, which reduces um, physical, uh, sorry, not physical, reduces all damage by 50% to all allies within 5 yards. Because it is only 5 yards. Maybe opt in for a root effect from a druid. Um, and then save the sheep for someone else. Um, because obviously sheep is quite a, uh, a good um, CC. Um, but obviously uh, the Glintrock Ironhide being a melee um, mob. You know you can root it and it'll be fine. Because it's only 5 yards when he'll actually do his uh, special ability. That being Iron Protector. Okay, so that was Gekin. Again, really fun fight. I can't wait to see that on heroic mode because, um, right, here's a bit of trivia. The first person to announce this in the comments below, you win 500 internets. Um, what is the third boss called in Magister's Terrace, heroic or normal? Uh, Magister's Terrace, the third boss, which had uh, like a priest, a uh, like, and then the um, the the chance of having like a warrior, mage, all the other classes. Um, and basically you would um, they'd heal themselves and use all their totems and stuff and it was really fun that fight was amazing on Heroic um, and I hope that Gekin's fight will be as good if not better than that so let's talk about a little bit more about the trash um, 
we have uh, Flame Seekers. These are the two mobs which are casting the spells. Um, they do fireballs, which are easily interrupted and spell reflectable. They also have uh, erupting flame, I think it's called, which will uh, make an AoE on the floor and also fling anyone caught in that AoE up into the air and they'll take fall damage. But the most important thing to interrupt is the Molten Barrage. Now what that does is they'll basically do like a whirlwind effect and attack everyone with their fire damage, which is what this mob is doing now. So try and save uh, your interrupts for that. Um, what I was tending to do was uh, try and use my charge as effectively as possible using my um, uh, shockwave and again my intimidating shout if uh, you know needs be and obviously throwing in spell reflects here and there. Um, I do have mass spell reflect. Um, I don't find it that useful when you have aggro of everything um, but again I do really like the way that you have these tomes of I forget the name but basically you can redo your glyphs like you can now uh, and talents on the fly so as soon as you're out of combat you can change your talents i think that's amazing uh so you don't have to keep going back to uh you know halfing out and being summoned back in during raids uh, it gives you so much more flexibility and i i think that's so so powerful basically in the game so so powerful um so again we're gonna pull the second to last trash in the uh, instance um the big mob in the middle of the uh, high guard just has a big weapon, does you know reasonable damage throughout. Whereas the um, the flame seekers, they have potential to do a lot of damage with their molten barrage. But again, try and keep them relatively close together. Uh, silence is really good if you can stack them on top of each other. Then it's slightly easier to shockwave. Um, being a tauren as well, using a war stomp is really effective at interrupting all of this. And yeah, I do feel quite uh, powerful as a Tauren uh, warrior with a lot of stuns and interrupts. You know, you're able to um, basically uh, cancel a lot of casts, which is very fun. Um, I do enjoy um, playing warrior at the moment. And I think that's the first time I've, I've kind of yeah gone out and said it. Because uh, a lot of my friends and people have been asking me, like, how are you finding warrior? And I, I think, it, it well, to begin with, I wasn't a fan of it at all. But after doing a load of theory crafting a few days ago and you just kind of like learn you know the pros and the cons and once you know that you can you know make better decisions um and speaking of you know theory crafting and going through all the spells and stuff um i am going to be bringing out a video hopefully within the next few days of how to uh you know how to change uh, the like the upgrade if you like from cataclysm to mr pandaya with regards to warrior tanking um i've got a load of notes on that about you know three or four pages worth and uh, i'll be hopefully bringing out that video relatively soon but again it depends how in depth i want to go and depends how much time i have on my hands but anyway um let's bring you up to speed with the rest of this instance uh, the last boss is Exin, the Weapon Master. Now, this is a really fun fight. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I Yeah, I, th I think this is the most fun fight in Cataclysm so far. Um, although on Heroic, I think that Gekin's fight, the second boss in this instance, might be more fun. Just because there are extra adds um, and you know more, more healing and stuff going on. But anyway, uh, Exin, the Weapon Master. Um, fairly straightforward fight. Again, with it being normal mode it's pretty easy um however there are more um elements which will get you killed so let's go through them all and i'll show you what they do and what they are so he has a ground slam ability which is you know frontal cone aoe you can see it here being cast a long cast time very easy to avoid make sure that you have uh, the boss facing away from the range and the melee so they don't have to move so they can do more damage it does a hundred and sorry does a hundred thousand physical damage also reduces uh, your armor by 25% for 20 seconds and it does stack. He has circle of flame. You can see that fire in the background, the circle of fire funnily enough, hence the name. Um, basically there's a, um, you see the levitating staffs in the background or near, we can see it making a circle now. Um, those levitating staffs will create a circle on the floor. When the circle is completed, anyone inside that circle will be thrown up into the air and take 80,000 fire damage. And I think they'll also take fall damage as well. I'm not sure I, I wasn't ever inside one um, because they're easy to avoid, as are almost everything in this boss fight. Except then I got knocked back by the whirling axes. These are the uh, red things spinning around. 
they look a bit like axes. Um, they do 60,000 physical damage and knock you back if you get within 6 yards of them. Um, he also has Bellowing Roar, which he'll do throughout the fight, causing uh, six, uh, sorry 50,000 damage to all enemies and uh, also increasing uh, his arsenal of attacks. Uh, the, the main attacks throughout are Ground Slam, the, uh, the Shockwave ability, and the Circle of Flame, the staff making the circle. They're the abilities that happen throughout the encounter. His arsenal abilities are the Whirlwind Axes, which he'll start at, I think, 66% HP. He also has Blade Trap, which at 66% HP, Exin activates his second trap. Um, the Stream of Blades, which you see like swords uh, going from one side of the room to the other. Uh, they inflict 30,000 physical damage every second you're in them. So if you do need to move, move through them quickly and only take 30,000 damage, please. Don't stand in them because you'll take a lot of damage very quickly. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. It does damage every half second. So even more reason to move out of them. Um, he also has death from above, uh, which he'll be starting now because he's below 33% HP when he starts death from above. He activates mounted crossbows on the walls. You can see one just at the top there. I don't even see it, the pillar at the top. Um, basically, what they do is 4,000 physical damage every second to a random player. As you can see, the fight isn't awfully complicated. There's a lot to take in, though. There are a lot of different abilities. But if you keep your head cool and just avoid shit on the floor, you shall be fine. Normal mode, so there's not an awful lot of damage you're going to be taking. It does get more hectic as the fight progresses, but it is a very fun fight nonetheless. Just careful of everything on the floor don't worry too much about your dps just make sure your health is fine if you are going low just you know heroically out of the fight for a few seconds wait for some heals consider using bandages you know it's all very um samey uh just you know try and take as little damage as possible and as long as you do that and the rest of the group uh do that as well you'll be fine um, if you've got any questions let me know in the comments below if you've got any requests let me know in the comments below thank you again for watching uh, Mongo Sham Palace walkthrough by me TSW. If you enjoyed this video, please thumbs it up. It helps me out tremendously as a um, a young YouTuber, a new YouTuber, whatever you want to call me. It helps support me a lot. Um, also, by favoriting the video, you can help me a lot. And if you're not subscribed, uh, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel if you liked this video and videos of this nature. Um, again, cheers. If you want to know anything, you know you can PM me on YouTube, leave me a comment. Uh, and I'll catch you guys later again for the like, 100th time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.